me now Come with me now Fez, can you? All right. Qu quick question for y'all: Is this our normal? Why not? Fez says it is. Why do you say it's not? It's just weird. A little inappropriate. Okay. Uh, well, here's the other question. Are these our, I shortened it, models, but are they, are they good role models for us? Why not? Whoa, who's breaking the law? Oh. He's not presently breaking the law. Okay. You will never be as successful. All right. Big. Selfies. Uh, did you know I invented the selfie? I'll show you that later. All right, Fez, read it to us now. Go ahead. All right, cool. Who went to Mass this weekend? Did you know the second reading was that? It was like, wow, I was planning that for today, and that was the reading. That's right. But you know what I find interesting about this is that that was written like 2,000 years ago, right? So even back then, you know, society, you know, got a little bit wild, and what, what was considered normal wasn't necessarily considered right. And so it still applies to us today. Fez, uh, who's going to pray for us today? Angela? Okay. Did she always pick you? Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Amen. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so I promised you I would go over this, but you know what? I think I think you got it all right, didn't you? Yeah, looks good. So you tell us what to do. Okay, first I'm going to draw the market graph. So when you see the word market, that means there's buyers and sellers, right? So that means we got to put both curves. Label everything, and then get in a good habit to actually label this energy drinks, right? Okay. All right, what's going to happen? Tell them why the demand moves to the right. Okay, so there's the key, though. People want more of it because it makes them smarter. But are they buying more of it because the price got lower, or are they buying more of it for some other reason? Yeah, so the, shirt, the curve will shift to the right because they're buying more, not because it's cheaper, but because they want it. Okay? Excellent. All right. So what happened to supply? No, well, number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it stayed the same. So we have point-to-point -point movement along the supply curve. So the higher price that resulted from the increase in demand resulted in an increase in quantity supplied, right? Okay, good job. Well, today you're going to learn that. You're going to learn how supply will, will actually shift today. No. Number three is, a, is like a, a preview of what, you're, of what you're learning today. Okay. So anyway, you want to do number three now? So what you'll find out today is that whenever something happens that costs business more money to produce, they're not going to produce as much, at least in the short run, so the supply curve will shift to the left. Okay. Now if we were on our original equilibrium and the supply curve shifts left, 
that gives us a new equilibrium that's a higher price and a lower quantity, right? So in that example, the demand curve doesn't change, but the quantity demanded did change. There we kind of see this coming together a little bit. Okay. Cool. What? What's that? It, it shifted left, which is lower quantities at every price. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So we're about to take a little quiz. But first, let's see. Look at that big objective. We're getting it. We're putting it all together today. Okay, everything. We're, we're, we're actually wrapping up our first unit today. Okay. So we're going to take a quick little quiz just to see if you paid attention last class and did your homework. <clears throat> you have two assignments. Now, here's the good news and the bad news. The two assignments, what's good about it is doing those assignments is what you're going to do to study for your major quiz. So you shouldn't have to do any additional studying after that, okay? It, uh, after doing these two assignments. Although I will tell you there is a, uh, there's a section on your major quiz about the PPC, so you might want to review that, okay? Production possibility curve. Most of your quiz is supply and demand, but then you'll have one little section where you have to do production possibility curve. Fez. No, they'll take less than 30 minutes. Oh, you mean these assignments? Oh, okay, I thought you meant the major quiz. Yeah, uh, I'll look at it in a few minutes. I don't remember. I don't think they're real long. Corbin. Uh, those are not on that quiz, on the major quiz. They'll be on your test, though. Okay. Uh, what, after, day after that. Yeah. Thursday. Monday. Cool. Good job. All right. Let's roll. Okay. All right, you ready, guys? Yeah, we're going to switch. We're going to do the trade and grade. All right. First thing, you have you should have drawn a market graph. Okay. Quantity, price, and it's labeled cameras. Okay. So far, so good? Okay. If... You're grading a paper that has an upward sloping supply curve, a downward sloping demand curve. X axis is labeled quantity, Y is labeled price, and the whole graph itself is labeled cameras. Something to that effect. They've earned one point. Cool? Okay, so far so good? I don't know. It's one point though so far. Okay? All right, the next thing. Uh, let's see, what happens to this market if everybody has a camera on their phone? What goes down? What's it? The demand goes down. Okay. So the next point is the demand curve shifting to the left. Okay. That's worth another point. Okay. So far, two points. Do, whoa. If they shifted right, what do you think it should be? Zero. Nothing. Come on, Fez. Don't help your boy. You're, helping him is correcting him. Okay. All right. So yeah, there, there's going to be less demand for this type of camera because we all have them on our phones. In fact, don't when y'all take pictures, don't most of your pictures come from your phone? Oh no, no. All right, the next part. Uh, the next thing is you had to indicate what happens to the price and quantity. Okay. So price will fall, and the quantity at equilibrium also goes down. You can help your boy here. If he indicated that the price went up and the quantity went up, then you can give him this next point. Okay? So that's also one point. Yeah, we're selling just a dollar. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, this is all you did? Okay, but. but okay, and then, so you did something like this? Okay. Well, all I, all I wanted you to make sure you did is this. 
indicate the changes. All right. That's fine. So we'll do that then. But it, either way, it's one point if it's clear that the price went down. Whoops. No, that's not like a fourth point. There's only three points total. Okay. All right. Any questions then? Then you can give them that, that second point. We call that internal consistency. So we're not going to, so many times in, in this class, your quizzes are going to be based on one thing at the very beginning. And if you screw up that very first thing, then everything will be screwed up. So in this class, if you can reason beyond your first mistake and you're correct, then it's all okay. So pass those up, a total of three points. Three out of three. Hundred. All right. Thank you. Hurry, hurry. Thanks. Gracias. Ma'am. Thank you. Um, yeah, we'll start doing that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, guys, y'all ready for class? By the way, I don't have any handouts for you today because the, the copier wasn't working right. But that's okay. I'm kind of leaning towards... Um, I mean, y'all y'all have figured out by now whether you like those or not, right? Okay. So you can print your own if you want to. It's whatever you want. Okay? I don't have them today. Like right now? No, just right on paper today. Today's not bad. Okay? So y'all have already done this. You've graphed supply curves. You had to do it for your homework. I think it was for cell phones, right? And so as you plot points, you end up with an upward sloping curve. Looks like this. There it is. Okay. I don't know the chapter. I forget. It's unit one, lesson four B today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, if if we're going to indicate a a supply increase, which way does the curve need to go? To the right. Okay. So here's how you know that. If it, if if it's if you're having trouble grasping that shifting down is an increase, because that's what you're seeing, right? You're seeing it shift down. Okay, don't think down, it's to the right. But if you just increase all those quantities, where does the curve go if there's more of it? It has to go to the right. So that's an increase in supply. So get that in your head if, if you're a little confused. Just make sure you understand right is getting bigger, left is getting smaller. Okay. So we can also decrease supply. So now, even though it's going to shift up, it's not shifting up, it's shifting left. Lower quantities at every price give you the indication that the curve will shift to the left. Everybody good? Okay, that's sort of like our little review. We also uh, did this last time where we put the two together and we figured out what equilibrium should be. Okay, if the price was set too low, what's going to happen to the price in a, fair, in a free market? If the price were initially $2, what's going to happen? And to alleviate the shortage, the market's going to correct itself and the price is going to go up to $3. Okay? And if the price were set too high, the market will correct itself and the price will come back down to $3. Okay? All right, so now we're going to talk about supply shifting. So let's figure something out. Where do businesses spend? What do they spend their money on? Anybody have any ideas? What kind of resources? Hold on, let's make this specific. Let's see. Anybody in here want to start a business? Oh, what is it? You want to have a bakery? Nice. Leave her alone. What's wrong with baking? All right. So, hey, I had a long, long weekend, and I totally blew some of your name. I forget. Ariel. Okay. I'm working on it, guys. Ariel's Bakery. Did I spell it right? Okay. So what do you have to spend your money on? 
the place. Okay. She's going to pay her rent. Now that's not rent as a payment for land, but it's the payment for her building. We're making it like business specific. What else? What, are, what resources? Okay, like flour. What else do you have to buy? Eggs. Okay, I'll put that here. Eggs, sugar, butter. All right, somebody over here said oven. Stove oven. Okay. Yeah, you got it. She's got, she does have to pay her workers, okay, so labor, wages. What else do businesses have to pay? Their, their uniforms and taxes, okay. <laughs> got to pay their taxes. Oh, yeah, she's got to advertise. What else? Cleaning supplies. Oh, yeah, electricity. Holy cow. Ah, electricity, water. Is that enough? Furniture? Storage. Do you ever deliver, Ariel? Trucks, gas. All right, I think we got a pretty good list, don't we? Okay. Oven and utensils. Uh oh, I'm off. I'm off. I'm done. Oh, insurance. That's an important one. We'll put that in here. Insurance. All right. That's enough. That's an exhaustive list, okay? So now let's, what's this, what do you, what do you think this is? That's her bag of money that she uses each month to pay all these things. Okay. Ariel, if any of these things go up in price, do you just get more money? Why not? Okay. So let's say all of this stuff in the, in the precise, perfect combination yields how many cakes? Cookies, whatever. Okay. Okay, all of that is going to equal 1,000 cookies. Okay. So now, what happens? Let's see. Um, war in the Middle East does what to the price of gas? Okay, so let's say the price of gas goes up. And at the same time, your health care costs go up. So over here, your wages and insurance or whatever, they go up. All right. So once those things cost more, where are you going to cut back? OK. So let's get rid of our advertising. What if that doesn't quite cover it? OK. You're going to have to cut, cut some of this. OK. All right. So at that point, does all of this still equal 1,000 cookies? Does it? You don't have as many people working for you. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. So after that happens, you're going to have something less than a thousand cookies. Okay? So did you just figure out what will shift the supply curve? Or did you figure it out? Pretty much. Okay? I mean, almost, and it's not just resources, it's any costs. What if we raise her taxes? Then she can't do other things, OK? So it, it could be anything. Anything that cost a business money more you know, up, above and beyond what they were used to paying, then it's going to have to reduce their supply. Okay. By the way, y'all didn't, didn't put her profit. She's got to earn a profit. That's right. All right. So basically, let's go through, we're going to go through an acronym that will give you all the supply shifters. We did this last class, right? Yes. So we wrote them down already? Yes. Do, do we need to go over them again? Or we do? Yeah? We're going to talk about them all individually, so we don't have to write them down again. Okay? All right, let's go. 
All right, first thing is resource cost, okay? Any resources. So if anything goes up in price that Ariel has to buy for her business, then she's not gonna be able to produce as much because that little bag of money that we had in the center here, let's go back. This is finite, okay? She can't just pull more money out of her butt. She can't bake money. So this is an X amount that she cannot change, okay? Unfortunately for her though, when she produces fewer cookies, this bag of money actually gets a little bit smaller. So it's like, what does she do? She's gotta make choices, okay? So anytime wages or raw materials go up, supply is gonna shift to the left, okay? It'll go down. So an increase in wages does what to the supply curve? Decreases it, very good. What if you're a computer company? and the price of the chips that go into the computer goes down, okay? Then, then here's how it works, okay? If any of those resources cost less, now you can afford to buy more of them, which means you can produce more, okay? So that's how resource costs will affect the supply curve. Higher resource costs, supply curve shifts left. Lower resource costs, it shifts to the right, okay? Alternative output. This one's kind of interesting. What if uh, Ariel makes cookies and cakes, okay? And today she's making 500 cookies, 500 cakes. What if she finds out that she can make more money producing cakes than cookies? What should she do? Yeah, so she'll make fewer cookies and more cakes. This is called alternative output. Um, anytime you have a price change in one good, it can affect the supply of the other good, okay? So here's another example. If the price of spinach decreases, the supply of broccoli will increase, okay? Here's how we have to read this. If the price of spinach goes down, that means that the profit you were making on spinach also goes down. And so by default, broccoli becomes more profitable, so you're gonna start producing more broccoli. Make sense? Same, same reason Ariel's gonna now make more cakes. No, the, the price that it's receiving. Like it, you could just say fewer people are willing to pay much for, for spinach, so the price goes down. So by default, it also means that spinach is less profitable. Because if your costs remain the same, but the price goes down, then the profit margin in there is gonna be a lot smaller. So. You, you could start making uh, broccoli, as an example. That's why Ariel's gonna make cake instead of cookies, because of the alternative output. Does that make sense? Okay, so that, that uh, what do we call it? What, what do you call that when you put a string of letters together? To Acronym, so the acronym, RATNESS, resource cost was the R, A is the alternative output, okay? Anybody know what this is? What do they make? What else do they make? Huh? Long mowers? Okay, what else? Motorcycles. Motorcycles, what else? Jet skis, what else? Private planes, what else? They make almost anything that runs on gas, okay? So they basically make any of these things. How do they determine what they're gonna produce more of and less of and what quantities and things like that? Yeah, it's how much money can they make? So, as an example, you've got these two situations. The price of gas has gone crazy, so people aren't buying as many of those little, yeah, I, I call it a truck, okay? So let's draw some curves here. The picture is the label, okay? So you all know which market graph goes with which, with which thing, right? Okay. So the price of gas goes way high. We as consumers don't wanna buy as many of these anymore, correct? So that makes sense, the price of those is gonna go down. If the price goes down, the profit's gonna go down. Does that make sense? Okay. So what should Honda produce more of now? Yeah, they're gonna produce more motorcycles. 
Yeah, that makes this price go up. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I meant to do that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still stuck on demand from the other day. By the way, demand would do that as well. But we're focusing on supply. Remember how we have to isolate things and we ignore all the rest? Okay. There we go. Make sense? Okay. So the reality of what would, would, would really happen here is demand would also increase. But what happened to the price? We can't really tell. It depends on the, the relative movement of each curve. Either way, though, this is maintaining its profit margin. That one went way down. Okay? So that's why they're going to produce less of that and more of this. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Eventually. Eventually it would. This is like short term stuff. Okay? All right. Number three, the T in RATNES stands for technology. <clears throat> Do you all know this guy right here? You all heard that song? Huh? Okay. That uh, what enabled him to sing is is called the auto tune. Have you all heard of that? Have you? Yeah. T Pain, yeah, but who uses it? Almost everybody uses it. So the fact that there's more technology, what has that done to the supply of music? Yeah, technology in general. Let's say if we were alive 200 years ago, how would you listen to music? The Walkman. Fez, come on. 200 years ago, the Walkman? 200 years ago. <laughs> Fez. I had a Walkman when I was like your age. All right. Corbin's right. The symphony. You'd have to go to a concert. Okay. You'd have to go to a live performance. So technology has made music do what? More supply, right? You can get it anywhere on demand. All right. Now here's Steve Payne. Everybody can sing. It's a pretty good song, right? All right, so that's technology. Here's another one. Okay, wait a minute. Before we talk about this, why is that flashing like that? Anybody know who Adam Smith is? Did we talk about Adam Smith in this class yet? You do? Can you tell the class, Adam Smith? He wrote The Wealth of Nations. Very good. Okay, anything else? All right. Well, he, he wrote a, critis, a criticism of um, mercantilism. He said free markets are going to put resources where they should go by themselves. Like, and he, and he, he made the comparison of the market system as an invisible hand that automatically moves resources to their most efficient production. It automatically you know, gives me the goods I want. The invisible hand causes businesses to produce what it is I want, you know, things like that. Okay, I had to, I had to preface that so that you'll get the joke. So technological improvement. Uh, suppose a new milking machine called the invisible hand, get it? It's an econ joke. Has a very soothing effect on cows. Cows find the new machine so utterly delight delightful that they produce 30% more milk. This technological advance will cause a shift to the right. Everybody get that? Anybody in here ever milk a cow? A goat? A no, anybody ever do a, the real thing? You did? You did? How was it? How long did it take to get uh, 20 gallons out? And how much came out? Not a lot. So if all of us had our own cows and we went out every morning to milk them, 
Would would it take a long time to get enough milk for a cereal? Okay. The machine though. Yeah. But the machine can suck a cow dry in less than five minutes. Yeah, and then move on to the next cow. So what happens to actual milk production when you have this machine? It's increased. Okay. That's why we don't have cows at our house anymore. Okay. We we can buy this at the store because there's such a great supply of it. Yeah, there's a direct relationship between technology and supply. More technology, more supply. Okay, And you can think of that, you know, I didn't bring this up because I don't want to confuse anybody, but if you think about su the supply curve, it's pretty much the same thing as the PPC to a degree. Okay, if, if, if you have more resources or new technology, you can produce more supply, just like you can get more from your PPC. All right, number four, this is the N in rat nest, is the number of suppliers, okay? Let's see, I have a video here. No, it's a song. No, it's a video. I forget. They have a jingle. Have all, did y'all know they had a jingle? Yay! All right, so we'll talk more about them in a second. If more firms enter an industry, the supply curve will shift which way? Right, okay, that's straight up. That one's very easy to figure out. When Japan began selling cars in the United States, what happened to the supply of cars in the US auto market? It gets bigger, okay? You guys have so many choices. When I was a little bitty child, really there were only four auto companies that you could buy. As I got older, then the Japanese started coming. Now we have Korean cars. Of course, there's all kinds of European cars. So the more suppliers, greater the supply. Okay. When in and out opened in North Texas, what happened to the supply of hamburgers? Increased. Whoa. All right, that's enough of that. All right, you want to see this girl? I uh, know you're going to, trust me. Hang on. Let's get this thing going. I need to drive. It's just so overwhelming. I've been playing all night. Pinch me. It doesn't feel real. Do y'all remember those lines? Oh. It's nostalgia. She's from California. That's how hoarding begins. She was, I would, I, I don't know if I'd cry, but I would really love Whataburger if it came to California. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but Whataburger's different. All right, so we're good on, let's see, resource costs, alternative output, what was it, technology, okay? And we covered number of suppliers. This one's a little more uh, confusing, but it has to do with expectations. Remember the demand curve had expectations? So does the supply curve. So we need to put ourselves in the place of somebody who's selling things, okay? If you produce something, do you have to sell it right away? No, what, it, well, it does depend. If it's like bananas, if it's perishable, then you pretty much have to sell it when you produce it. But what if it's something you can warehouse? Christine, then what? Yeah, you could hold on to it and wait till the prices go higher, couldn't you? So here's the key on this one. Something's not part of the supply curve unless it's actually for sale, okay? So if oil producers expect future oil prices to decline, what happens to the supply today? It increases today, okay? So they're gonna sell all they can at the higher price, but then if, if they expect prices to be uh, higher in the future, when do they wanna sell it? later on in the future, they'll hold it. So they'll hold it out of supply for that time. If they know what? Oh, if they think the price will go down in the future, then demand will go down today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all good on this? Okay. Uh, the S in rat nest is subsidies. Okay. This is just free money from the government. So if the government's gonna pay you to do something, 
not only can you sell whatever you're producing for money, but then the government is going to pay you money on top of that, then the supply curve will shift to the right. Okay? Yeah, this is direct. Okay? Uh, yeah. Or inverse. So free money from the government induces suppliers to supply more. Some examples we've seen, uh, or I'm sure y'all, I don't know if y'all covered this in U.S. history last year or not. Y'all cover price, price supports in agriculture during the Great Depression? Yeah, iffy, okay. Um, let's see, the problem with subsidies, uh, economists don't like subsidies because it, it allocates resources to some place where the market doesn't want the resources to be, okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, that yeah, that one's different. Um, what was that one called? That was set asides. So they had to set aside land, and they would get paid for that. So that's a little bit different. It's a, like a reverse subsidy, almost. Anyway, the problem with subsidies it distorts market forces, prevents the efficient allocation of resources. Also, it could lead to just you know whoever has the most influence in Congress or with the president gets all the goodies. So that's why economists don't like this. Okay, uh, Here's an example. This is a consumer subsidy, but the producer ends up getting the money. So we're going we're gonna to use this as an, as an example. Uh, when the Chevy Volt came out, there was an $8,000 subsidy. So whenever you went to buy the car, $8,000 was already knocked off the price. Okay, So that enabled producers to produce more. All right, taxes is the T, so we've covered all of them. But anyway, if, if the government takes money from producers, then in Ariel's case, she didn't have enough money to buy sugar or flour or labor, and so she couldn't produce as much. Okay, So taxes take away business profits, decrease supply. Regulations are also like a tax. Anybody know what regulations are? Safety things? Okay. Okay. Can y'all think of any regulations we could put on Ariel's business that might be good for us? Huh? Gluten-free, all right. You're not allowed to put any gluten in any of your recipes because we want it gluten-free. What does that do to the way you conduct business? Well, it might. Well, maybe the gluten-free uh, ingredients cost more. So. Yeah, and maybe you need to hire more expertise, more specialized labor. I'm just guessing. I've, I don't even know where the kitchen is at my house. So I'm just guessing on all of this. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Taxes, indirect. Or inverse. Okay. All right. So anyway, if businesses have their taxes increased, it moves the supply curve which way? To the left. Very good. Okay. All right. We're going to watch. This is a form of regulations. Uh oh. Uh oh. My, my start button is not where I can get to it because there's a thing in front of it. Oh, I can move this? Oh, no. Okay. Hold on. I think I'm good. Yeah. I can get to it now. So this is a video about lemonade stands. Hey, y'all write down all the regulations you can get out of this, okay? Let's see if we can get them all. Thank you. 
The girls had only been open for one day before Midway's police chief and an officer cruised by and saw the stand. They told us to shut it down. Shut it down. Did they tell you why they had to shut it down? Yeah. Now look, we understand you guys are young, but still, you're breaking the law, and we can't let you do it anymore. The law is the law, and we have to be consecutive, consistent with how we enforce the laws. By a city ordinance, the girls must have a business license, food, and vendors permit in order to set up shop. The city says they want to see everyone safe and healthy, and there's no exceptions to that. We're not aware of how the lemonade was made, who made the lemonade, or what the lemonade was made with. So we did act accordingly by city ordinance. Sure, I'm trying to say that just anywhere, they don't have anything better than this. So the law wins, and what started out as three girls' dream of a fun summer business is now just a piece of plywood. The permit said license will cost the girls $50 a day, plus an extra $180 a year. Since the lemonade stand was shut down, the girls have been doing extra chores and yard work to make the money for the water park. Nice. All right, so did y'all hear some of the, what would it cost them per day to run a lemonade stand? 50 bucks a day. Isn't that nuts? So their costs go up $50 a day plus a $120 uh, food and beverage license? Yeah. So, all right, so what, if you didn't hear it, the reason they were shut down is because they didn't have a business license, which costs $50 a day. And they also didn't have a food and beverage license, which was 120 a year. Okay, does that make sense? So, what kind of lemonade stand can afford $50 a day? Uh, yeah, the one at the fair. There you go. So, what happens to the supply of lemonade whenever you have those kind of regulations? They go way over here, right? In order to actually um, stay open and pay those those fines, only a few would be able to do it because the, the price would end up being so high that they'd be able to. But that's outrageous, isn't it? How can Ariel, can you stay in business with those kind of deals? How many cupcakes are you going to have to sell to pay your $50 a day business license? A lot. A lot. Okay. Who's going to buy them? Where? Oh, Highland Park. Okay. All right, so we got back to this, right? It all boils down to this, everybody. So resource costs, alternative output. So if you think about it, the resource costs are built into what they spend on labor, ingredients, energy, fuel. Okay. That's good enough. Um, oh, capital. That'd be her oven. Okay. Uh, alternative output is captured by the profit motive. Okay, yes sir? No, it'd be land. Her building would be capital. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see what else. We've got resource costs, alternative output, technology. Okay, it's not, it's not on here. But if some new technology came about, she could do all of these things with less money. So then maybe, maybe she could afford higher wages at that point. Uh, number of suppliers isn't on this. Let's see. Expectations could be in here based upon the pricing that you would receive in the future. Subsidies aren't on here, but what if, hey, Ariel, what if the government wanted you to produce cupcakes? Maybe they'd pay you a dollar per cupcake for everyone you make? Oh, yes, you wouldn't. Okay. So that would be next. Never mind. Uh, raise your taxes, then you got to cut back somewhere, right? So the bottom line is this. If something is good for business, supply will increase. If it's bad for business, supply will decrease. Okay? So drawing it graphically. Okay. Good for business means the resource costs went down. Okay? 
Maybe they found it to be more profitable to produce something different. Um, the alternative output would come into play with, with the others. Technology, a new technology, that'd be good for business, right? It wouldn't be good for the individual businesses. That's true. Yeah. So there's some there's some exceptions to my bottom line. Um, expectations. If you think you can sell it for more in the future, you're going to cut back. If you think you can sell it for less in the future, you're going to you're going to supply more now. Uh, subsidies are good for business, right? Lower taxes would be good for business. So those are good things. That means the supply curve shifts to the right. Okay. And then all the bad things, raise their taxes, raise the minimum wage, uh, war in the Middle East, raising gas prices. Those are all bad for business. So the supply curve would shift to the left. All right, y'all happy with that? Okay, so the shifting isn't that bad. Okay, it's not too, dif too difficult. Now we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk more about the equilibrium again, okay? Because what I need to make sure y'all understand is what happens to the price? whenever any of those curves shift, okay? And you're not always told which curve would shift, okay? Like as an example, how would an increase in swine flu affect the market for face masks? Demand would increase, okay? So we shift the demand curve to the right, and then if the price doesn't go up, you would get a shortage, right? So that's why the price has to go up. Okay, anytime you have a shortage, you have to raise prices in order to alleviate the shortage. So demand curve shifts right, prices go higher. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what will happen, so this is, this is the, the graph that, that we have today, which is 9-2, okay? If we fast forward, let's say we're in December now, that... Uh, this profit motive. If the prices are higher, you're going to end up with more people supplying more. So in the future, the price will come down a little bit. Okay? But that's the future. The current way it looks is without that. Okay? That's how it all started, by the way. What? Swine flu? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that was, uh, hey, that was for generators. No, not really. I mean, prices have to go up. It's like in a time of emergencies when, like, if I were the only supplier of face masks and we were worried about a plague, then, yeah, you could call that price gouging, but it's, I mean, it's the only way to do it. All right, yeah, that's how it started. I like this picture. I think it's cute. Because I remember when, I don't know, do y'all remember swine flu? Okay. Yeah, if somebody was suspected of having it, they had to go to the nurse, stay in the nurse's office all day, and then go home for two weeks, right? It was like being in a prison. All right, how about this one? All right, focus. We're back. Hey, Lucy, what if people wanted to smell more natural? How would that affect the market for perfume? All right, good. So we're going to shift the demand curve. And then the price would have to come down as well, right? What if the price didn't come down? There'd be surpluses, OK? So the market price always has to occur unless you want shortages and surpluses. All right, we've got new technology on donut production. Christine, what happens here? OK. And then when you move it to the right, what's going to happen to the price? You got it, okay? So the supply curve shifts to the right. We have a new price that's lower, okay? Pretty cool, right? No, no, not surplus and shortages. Neither one of those are good. Mm -hmm. That means you produce more, and the and the reason you won't have this in a free market is because the price is going to automatically go down to the to the correct price of two dollars. They are, see? The, the quantity demanded increased, and so yeah, more people will buy it. 
the the only reason the supply curve shifts right because this new technology enables them to produce more at every price than they used to. So all the quantities at each price will increase for supply. But that that savings gets passed on to the consumer with the lower price. Do you see it? Okay. I don't understand how uh, then why is there a surplus then? There's not. The surplus would exist if the price doesn't fall. Oh. Okay. So we're just illustrating why it is the price has to come down. Okay. In fact, if they left their price at three dollars, all those donuts are going to go bad, right? Okay. Ariel, do you make donuts at your shop? Yes. Okay. Do you sell muffin tops? Just the top of the muffin. What do you do with the stumps? Who eats those? Oh. Okay. Effects of increased regulation on LASIK surgeries. Supply goes where? Okay. Yeah, anytime you increase regulations, then you're going to have less supply of something. Okay. All right. And if the price doesn't rise, you'll end up with shortages. Okay. So we've come full circle, haven't we? The demand for Nemo increased. What happened to the price of Nemo? It had to go up, okay? If it didn't go up, there'd be shortages of Nemos, right? Okay. Invention of the calculator. How does that affect the slide rule market? Anybody ever seen a slide rule? I have not. I'm not old enough. But there are, I, we, I worked with a teacher that used one, so who knows? Anyway, the price would have to come down, wouldn't it? If the price didn't come down, then the, these people supplying them would continue to supply too many. Okay. Fewer gas stations due to government regulation. Do, do you all know what it takes to open a gas station? What? A lot? <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, and, and did you know that in the, I think it was in the late 90s, they passed a new regulation and all of the existing gas stations had to dig up their old their old tanks and replace them because they were afraid they could leak. And a lot of those gas stations, guess what they did instead? They just shut down, okay? So these regulations, how does that affect the supply of gasoline? That's right. Shifts to the left, price goes higher. Why would that increase demand? Oh, you mean it would increase sales at, at the existing gas stations? We're, we're not concerned with that, though. When you say demand, this is the whole curve, everybody. Okay, so I'm not going to buy more gas just because there's fewer gas stations. Okay, Lucy. Yes, take off. It would increase demand. Yeah. But this is a, this is all rational behavior, though. If you think that it's going to go away forever, what are you really going to do? You're going to find some other way to, to use a car. I really wish they would get nuclear-powered cars, because you would never have to refuel them, ever. Why not nuclear-powered? All right. I can buy that. All right, all right. But the, but the electric one, it requires a really long extension cord, whereas the nuclear is all self-contained. Well, uh, well, well, we'll be dead by the time we need to worry about it. Yeah, that's what we do all the time, isn't it, Angela? Okay, so we'll just keep doing that. All right, fine. I would drive an electric car if they would if they would make it go, you know, like a long way. Well, what if I want to take a trip to California? But what if, so how do you plan this? Like, is there an app for that? Okay. So do you think they'll have a, do, do they have a supercharging station in, say, somewhere between San Antonio and El Paso? Because that's like 800 miles of nowhere. What do you do then? I know. 
Okay. All right, you guys ready? Time out. This is, this is why I like economics, because it's so real. This is... This isn't a picture of my family, but we had a Suburban and a trailer, just like that. And we used to take trips. We used to drive that thing to California. And, and combined, it would get eight miles per gallon. Okay? Now that gas costs $3.50, what has happened to this market? Demand has gone down. Okay? So people don't want to do that anymore or they can't afford it. I would still like to, but just can't afford it. Okay? We used to do that when it was when gas was a dollar eighty or whatever. Yeah. But then it went up to three fifty and it's like, forget it, we can't do that. I know. I was mad too. What happens when a hurricane hits the hits uh, Central America? There's less bananas, right? So there's there's less supply of bananas, so the supply curve shifts to the left. What happens to the price of bananas? Okay, good. All right, and then we talked about this, but after 9-11, what happens? Which makes the price of flags? Price goes higher, see? Okay. Ariel? Ariel, you're not a very good business person. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. We're going to put it all together now. Okay? And the only thing I want to know is what happens to the price. Yes, ma'am? Um, they both can do that to each other, but it's long run, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to, we're going to make it simple. What? Come on in. All right, so all we're concerned with is what happens to the price, okay? All right, so all of the growers meet and agree to grow fewer oranges next year. What's going to happen to the price? Price is going to rise. How do we know that? Less supply. Less supply, so you end up with a higher price. Okay, very good. All right, so let's fill that out. Actually, let's have you all do this. You all come fill this out, and then Megan... Pick five of your best friends, and y'all come up here and do all this, and then we'll go from together. Okay, go ahead. All right, come on, hurry up. Y'all decide which ones you're gonna do. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hurry up! It doesn't take very long. No, on the board. Economics. Why? Hmm? Mm -mm. Business. No, I was I, I sold chemicals. And I did. I, I made good money, but I, I was totally unfulfilled. Didn't like it. Like, yeah, six figures. Yeah. I was selling chemicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I did both. I was in sales management and then also sales. Um... It didn't really take that long, but I did it for 13 years. Yeah. Sales. Hmm? Who? I have no idea. I have no idea. Let's see if we did this right. Yeah. It's hard to draw, isn't it? All right, let's see if we did it right. Okay, number one we already did, right? So that's good. All right, growers plant more acres of orange trees. That's going to create more supply, so the price will go down. Very good. Okay. Um, number three, orange growers run an advertising campaign promoting oranges as a symbol of good health. Yep, we have more demand. 
Okay. So it'd rise. Uh, one grower out of thousands retires and stops growing oranges. No big deal. Okay. So nothing happens. Growers develop a bigger and better tasting orange. Corbin, that was yours. You said it rises. Yeah, because we're going to like it. We want that orange. Look how juicy it is. Okay. Orange growers are struck by the disease causing Mediterranean fruit fly. That one's rise also. Why? Less, I mean, yeah, less supply. Okay. Every year, somebody thinks that the actual farmer is getting the disease. Is that what y'all thought, or? I mean, the way you said it. Yeah. No, it's just. I mentioned that we drive to California a lot. You know, when you get across the state line, they stop you, and what do they ask you? Do you have malaria? They ask you, do you have any fruit? Because they don't want any fruit brought into their state because it could have the fruit fly on it. Who is it? You should. Will you do it for me? I don't, I don't want to revert it. Too much work. All right, good job. Um, I got a couple more things to do, and then we'll move on. Uh, actually, what we'll do is you're going to have, what time we get out? OK, let's go, this, is, this has to do with your homework. We'll do a couple of these, and then I'll show you what your major quiz might look like, OK? So let's say improved technology enables producers to more efficiently produce batteries. OK, so you all should, on your homework, get a little scratch pad and draw this out. OK, and you'll show an increase in supply. The question might be something like, what happens to the price? So that would drive the price lower, so that's good. Okay. High demand for scooters attracts more manufacturers to the scooter market. That's also increased supply. No. No. Okay, what else? You had a question? Well, because that's a given. So that's a given, and then we're looking at uh, attracts more manufacturers to the scooter market. So the more manufacturers is the part that we're looking for. Okay. If it said higher gas prices attracts more buyers to the scooter market, yeah, then it would be demand. Okay. Enforcement of immigration laws reduces the number of immigrant laborers. What happens to wages? A resource cost in home construction. So in this one, you draw a graph for houses. What happens here? Okay. Less supply, very good. Oil producers expect the price of oil to increase substantially in the future. So they hold out, that'd be less supply also. Okay, good. Uh, let me show you what your quiz is gonna look like. And then, by the way, Corbin, I looked at all that the key is. It's actually quite a few questions on the second one. Oh, was, oh I'm sorry. Was it you? Okay, I'm sorry, get confused. Y'all y'all look exactly alike. You both have glasses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all are identical. No, I, I see it exactly. All right, so here's your situation you're given. Okay? Let's see. Megan, make something happen to coffee. What do you want to happen in the coffee market? Just tell me anything. Anything you want. Okay, because why? Starbucks advertising campaign? Yeah, monkeys. monkeys did something? What? <laughs> I think they said monkeys stole all the It could be anything. But she wanted, I, I asked Megan, so she wants demand to go up. Okay, so we're going to say that Starbucks advertising campaign has done something to affect these markets. Okay? So now you've got demand for coffee increasing. What happened to the, okay, so we got demand increasing. What happened to the supply? Okay, stays the same for now. What happened to the equilibrium price? Went up. What happened to the equilibrium quantity? Also went up. Okay. Then the next question is, based on what happened in the coffee market, explain what happens in the tea market. Why does demand go down? Yeah, they want the coffee. They're substitutes, right? So demand goes down over here. Okay, so we could we'll do the same thing here. Got demand down, supply stays the same, right? Okay, equilibrium price down, quantity 
down also. Okay, what happens in the cream market? Okay. So it ends up being exactly like the coffee. So demand up, supply the same, price same, price same. Uh, compliments. Now let's do the monkeys. What happened with the monkeys? Can you imagine how amped up the monkeys will, are going to be now? I mean, they're already like crazy. All right. So, so the supply drops, right? Okay. Now, due to this, by the way, we could do this. Uh, well, I put red. Yeah, the blues are gone. Yeah, supply has dropped. Okay. Price has gone higher, right? Quantity, though, has gone down. Okay. So now, what happens in the tea market as a result of the coffee problems? Hold on. Oh, oh, we got demand goes up, right? Nothing, this price over here doesn't cause producers of tea to make more tea. Okay? So it has to be a demand thing. We are going to start drinking tea for whatever reason. Okay? Yeah, because the price of coffee went up. This is a substitute. So the, the markets are interconnected. So demand goes up, supply stays the same, right? Price goes up. Quantity goes up. Yeah. In the future, yeah. Okay. But yeah, these are all like snapshot in time. So remember, supply and demand are the quantities at, at a given time. So let's see, cream. People use cream with coffee more than tea, right? Okay, so the demand falls. So we got demand goes down, supply stays the same. Price down, quantity down. Okay. So, you need some helpful hints for your quiz? You need to be able to draw these graphs, number one. So, if you've never drawn one, you got to be able to draw them, put the correct labels on them. Okay. Then, given a scenario, determine if one or both curves change or not. Okay. And then draw the change on your graph that you already drew. And then analyze what happened. Price change, quantity change, any of that. Corbin. Uh, 